ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وسندنا ومولانا محمد محمد عبده وحبيبه ورسوله نور النور وبدر البدور صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأولاده وأزواجه وخلفائه الراشدين المرشدين المهديين من بعده ووزرائه الكاملين في عهده خصوصا منهم على ساداتنا ابي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعلى بقيه الصحابه والقرابه والتابعين والذين اتبعوهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد فيا عباد الله اتقوا الله واطيعوه إن الله مع الذين اتقوا والذين هم محسنون يقول الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال تعالى فاستقم كما أمرت وقال عز وجل إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا تتنزل عليهم الملائكة ألا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة التي كنتم توعدون صدق الله العظيم وقد قال نبيه الكريم محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم من صام رمضان ثم أتبعه ستا من شوال كان كصيام دهر وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام اتق الله حيثما كنت وأتبع السيئة الحسنة تمحها وخالق الناس بخلق حسن وعن سفيان بن عبد الله رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قلت يا رسول الله قل لي قولا لا أسأل عنه أحدا غيرك قال قل أمنت بالله ثم استقم رواه مسلم صدق رسول الله ألا إن أحسن الكلام وأبلغ النظام كلام الله الملك العزيز العلام كما قال الله تبارك وتعالى في نظم الكلام وإذا قرئ القرآن فاستمعوا له وأنصتوا لعلكم ترحمون Indeed, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first and the last. Our Lord, our Creator, our Sustainer and our Cherisher, the Most Kind, the All-Seeing, the All-Knowing, the All-Hearing. Salawat and salam be upon his final prophet and messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His pure family, noble companions And every believer Until the very last day Today is the 12th of Shawwal Our beloved prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had told us Anyone who managed to fast the blessed month of Ramadan and then 
followed that by fasting six days of this month of Shawwal would be as if he managed to fast the entire year. As if he spent his whole year fasting, observing arguably the most beloved of all deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a regular basis, with persistence and punctuality. So here it is, a great offer for grabs on the recommendation of the most beloved of Allah's servants, the wisest of all teachers, the most knowledgeable, the most gentle, the most caring and kind towards the mankind and the entire creation, the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, our messenger, our role model, our example is telling us, Allah gave you the tawfiq to see the blessed month of Ramadan, to be in it, to live the blessed month of Ramadan, to breathe in all the blessings and favors of that special and true season of worship for us Muslims, now it's the time for us to carry on, to keep going. A believer doesn't want to bend down unless there is a bullet, a very danger going his way, so he needs to escape it just by moving this, but again he wants to straighten up as soon as possible. A believer believes in Allah firmly and firmly walks the path. He's upright, straight. Our path is siratun mustaqeem. And that is one of those curious but very comprehensive commands that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in his wise book, ordering his messenger to believe in him and to stay firm and upright in that belief to follow the practice of Islam and to stay on the path, very upright, firm, steadfast. Arguably some scholars say this kind of order and burden was too much for the Prophet wasallam, so that his hair turned grey because he always wanted to ensure that he's on the right path. He's on the shortest and the best of lines, straight line to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you don't go astray. You don't go here and there and then lose your path. So this time of the year, my respected and beloved brothers and sisters and dear children, is also important junction in our spiritual search and path traveling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By Allah's grace and blessings and help, we manage to intensify our acts of worship during the blessed month of Ramadan and even more so in the last third of it, in the last 10 days and nights of Ramadan. And now the day of joy came, the day of Eid, and we celebrated. And now we don't want to lose. So today I would like to share with you a few notions, principles of our religion of our sacred tradition, which to me are really curious and significant. The first, you all know this, the Qur'an mentions, whenever we do something wrong, especially if it's a sin, we hasten, we hurry to repent and seek forgiveness. <coughs> Basically, we hurry to follow a bad deed, a slip up, by doing a good deed, making up for it. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith I read in the khutbah. Any one of us who follows up a slipper, a wrong, a sinful deed, a bad deed, a mistake, by doing a righteous deed, inshallah ta'ala, there will be a good swap for you and I. Allah will erase that bad deed, forgive us the mistake we made and reward us for the good deed that we performed right after it. So this notion of following some of the wrong by immediately doing good is very important in our religion. But did we ever think of a notion, when you do so much good, what do you follow so much good with? 
Certainly you don't want to follow good by evil. And so much good certainly not by wrong. So, in my humble conclusion, I concluded, when Allah blesses you to do so much good, to observe arguably the most beloved of Allah's deeds, fasting, when even if you try to ostentate, to show off with it, it's pointless, it's fruitless. You can easily hide from your parents or your spouse or your friends or your teachers and eat and drink somewhere in a closed environment and break your fast. But it seems that we were conscious enough that Allah is watching us. We cannot simply escape from Allah's sight. And it was that consciousness, mindfulness, that Allah is watching us and that we are fasting for Allah, but we will benefit in the end, which kept us going. And as I've been saying to you for the last two khutbahs I gave since the beginning of Ramadan, the whole idea of why we actually fasted for a whole month, day after day, is because we wanted this notion of God consciousness to go up and then not to lose it all of a sudden. We wanted it to stay with us. Yes, I agree and understand. It is difficult. It would be almost unrealistic to expect any one of us to fast throughout the year. Another month, the month of Shawwal, day in and day out. Allah wanted us to fast one month in the year. And it does seem that our Sharia is perfect, really. I was really touched recently by our local Muslim scholar or philosopher who claimed very nicely and passionately in front of an audience which was not fully Muslim that our legal system, Sharia, is perfect. It is our practice of it which needs mending, which needs straightening up uprightness, persistence. So even if you and I fasted the days when we have to, it's fard or wajib, inshallah ta'ala, that much of observing this particular ritual will at least put our lower desires in its place, in its check. We won't turn into animals. Because it is the lower self and our lower desires, which is the nafs, which doesn't want to go upright, doesn't want to go straight, because by its nature it's animalistic. So it's always looking down and following its instinct, whatever is good and soothing here and there, left, right, two, three times right and then left, and going in a zigzag line until it gets lost, until it's destroyed and distracted. It's like that, but there is something else within ourselves, which is ruh, soul, spirit. The spirit comes from Allah with its divine element or angelic realm. It doesn't want those paths which lead us to nowhere. It wants to stay on the straight line and go upright. The practice of fasting will will have helped us to achieve that. So the levels of God consciousness have gone up. But then I say, in order to excel in the path and to thrive, then all we need to do really is, our Iman in Allah, as the Hadith I'll tell you, says, then just turn to the Messenger of Allah, the Sunnah. Look at the prescription. What are the tips that your messenger is giving you that you are supposed to do to make sure you stay on the right path and to make sure that you don't do something wrong, regretful deeds that you're going to regret for the rest of your life. Follow the example of your messenger, of Allah's final prophet and messenger, Muhammad wasallam. And he said, not I. He said... Followed the fast of Ramadan by fasting another six days of Shawwal. Very soon we're going to see the full moon of Shawwal. 
the midpoint of this month. Hopefully it will remind us of the great, arguably most decisive battle in the history of mankind, the Battle of Badr, Al-Badr and Al-Kubra. And the Messenger of Allah crying his eyes in a tent that was made for him on that day, praying for you and I. So that they are worshippers that will stay behind him, behind that usbah. A few of them, 300 or so, that will dedicate their lives, their time to Allah and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here we are, more than 1400 years later. So he was there, but then even deeper than that, when you have a sight of the full moon and the month of Ramadan, and now that we are in Shiwal and following this particular instruction to fast additional six days of this month, we never want to forget Allah, our final ultimate aim and goal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who inspired our messenger towards what we say a perfection of a human practice, path. So, let us follow the sunnah. This is the point. And interestingly, it seems like the sunnah is not exceeding more or less six days of each month that we fast. We, we would, if we were to really be truthful and honest to our messenger and the love that we claim to have towards him and the reverence and respect, we would really fast at least six days every month of the year. And if we really did that, in my humble opinion, this amazing ritual of fasting and all its benefits and teachings, like it taught us patience, self-restraint, self-discipline, and raised the level of God consciousness with us, will stay for, with us for, for, for our lives, our lifetimes, year in and year out. We just need to follow the Sunnah recommendations when it comes to fasting. And interestingly, when I thought about today's khutbah, a couple of hadith came to my mind, but then I made an, a third hadith. And each one of them actually begins like, what are the most beloved actions to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The first one I already disclosed to you, fasting. So once the Prophet was asked, what is the most beloved of deeds? He said, a soul, fasting is the most beloved to Allah. On another occasion, he was asked again, He said, a salatu li waqtiha. He said, praying on time. Praying on time. And daily prayers, the five daily prayers also have this notion of istiqana in them. Because Allah didn't say sallu, He said, sallu wa sallimu ala nabi. In that sense, send peace and salutations to the Prophet. He said, aqimu salah, iqamatu salah. Establishing your daily prayers. So if the Prophet was asked, what is the most beloved deed to Allah? And then he answered, praying on time, if Allah also blessed us by his tawfiq and grace, we managed to observe our five daily prayers during the month of Ramadan, just like we fasted its days, or we were more punctual than ever, it would be a disaster to follow such a good establishment, such a good practice by ruining it, by abandoning the prayers. In that sense, listen to what the Prophet said to one of his closest companions, most beloved actually, relatives. He came to him asking for advice. He said, لا تكن مثل فلان كان يقوم ليل فترك قيام الليل. Don't be like so and so who used to stand at night in prayers and then he abandoned that practice because it's such a good practice. دأب الصالحين من قبلكم according to one hadith. It's like, perennial excellent practice of all pious generations since the beginning of mankind and it will stay like that until the end of times and that's what we did in the form of taraweeh prayers we stood up at night after isha and the energy and the commitment and the resolution the himman ulul himman came from somewhere and it was not a burden we were looking forward to the next evening the following night, 
So we can again come and pray behind our favorite imams and change the mosques and so on and so forth. And enjoy the night vigil prayer. So in that sense, if those two deeds are really beloved to Allah, most beloved to Allah, I would say it won't be in line if with what I said, following good by good. Lots of good by good is good because it tells us of persistence and that is the third hadith which I mentioned. And really it is like that. Aisha radiallahu anha narrated this one. He was again asked, what is the most beloved action to Allah? And he said, Adwanuha wa in qalla on that occasion. He said, the one which you are punctual and persistent in is the most beloved. So all three of them are right answers really in their own rights. So the third one is more like it can actually touch upon any deed, including fasting, just like I said. So to get the mudawama in fasting, I would say is to fast the recommended days of fasting that our beloved Prophet Muhammad SAW recommended, which is roughly six days a month, or let's say six or three in the middle, but at least maybe six you can say, if not a little bit more than that. And then Salah, Allah made it, we have to pray every single day. There is no holiday for prayers, no day off throughout the year. And it's five of them a day, but in reward they are like 50. So if we were consistent, persistent, punctual on those two things, then we will surely be doing things which are most beloved, liked to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that takes us back to the hadith of Sufyan ibn Abdullah. Sufyan ibn Abdullah was another companion of the Prophet sallallahu He came to him once and he asked him, O oh, the Messenger of Allah, Ya Rasulullah, قُلْ لِي قَوْلًا قَوْلًا لَا أَسْأَلُ عَنْهُ أَحَدًا غَيْرَكَ He said, tell me a phrase that will be enough for me and I won't need to ask no further anyone else apart from yourself. It will suffice me as advice for my deen and my religion and my life. Then the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Qala, Qul, say, O Sufyan, say, Amantu Billah. Say, I believe in Allah. And we all say that every single day and we have to. Recently, I had, we had lots of people here who became Muslim before Ramadan, in Ramadan, after Ramadan. We ask them to read Shahadatain. We tell them to say, to testify that there is no God but Allah, one true God. And then we also ask them to testify that Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is Allah's final prophet and messenger and his servant. So he told Sufyan something like that. Say, Amen to Billah. I believe in Allah. Thumma istaqim. Thumma istaqim. And then be firm and steadfast on the path, on the religion that you affiliate yourself with, that you follow, Islam. So it's like shahadatain in a way. Yeah, we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we testify and firmly believe in the oneness of Allah, but then so what? So then turn to the messenger of Allah. And follow the Prophet Muhammad, follow the Sunnah, that's what it is. So basically what we say is standing firm and straight on the path really means believing in Allah and then following that by actions. Iman wa amal. Believe and work and you do work. So it's like what is the fruit or fruits of our belief? It's our deeds, our actions. You may have a magnificent huge tree, like those beautiful trees here in the house, but if they bear no fruits, you'll say, well, one point we might cut it down and use it for fire or fuel, because there is no other fruit from it, no, no other benefit. In the same way we tell all the new Muslims who become Muslim, and all of us who declare this shahad attain in the morning and in the evening, do the work. And I'll end the khutbah by a saying, uh, of one of the greats, Hatim al Asam. Once he was asked, O oh, Imam, we see that your 
level of reliance on Allah is at its perfection. Your tawakkul on Allah is like ikmal. So what have you based your particular reliance on Allah on? On what things did you base it on? How come you can rely on Allah with such a strong dedication and way and you don't seem to be upset and anxious like the rest of us and worry and you are, you are always at peace for some reason. And you always seem to trust in Allah and you have entrusted all of your affairs to Him and hence found the true happiness. So then he told them four things. He said, I learned from my great teachers who learned from their great teachers. It's like maybe five, six people between him and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi really, not, not a long chain to be honest with you. So from the Tabi Tabi'een he would learn and the Atba'i Tabi'een. So I learned it from them who learned it from the Sahaba who learned it from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I learned four things which helped me to, to have this level of Yaqeen and Tawakkul. And we are actually reading that chapter in our study circle, weekly study circle here. So he said, I learned that my deeds, my actions, no one else is going to do them for me. So I just got along with my own homework, so to speak, with my own job. I learned no one else is going to pray my prayers for me, so I do them. I learned that no one else is going to fast on my behalf, so I fast myself. So he understood that, and it's a very important uh, point to begin with in reflection of what I said earlier in the khutbah. Do your work. You can't say, I, uh, my intention is so pure and my children will do the homework for me. My parents have done so much prayer, they went to Hajj several times, why should I now pray? I'm sure their blessings of their Hajj and prayers will be with me. I'm afraid it doesn't work like that. We are all responsible for our deeds and we will be questioned on our own and come before Allah on our own. And it is our deeds that we can take with us, not the money and cars and properties that we have in land. It's your a'man that you can take with you and will take with you, whether it's good or bad, to your grave and will be presented to you on judgment day. So he said, I learned that my work will not be done unless I do it myself. So I got along with it. I've done my religious duties and beyond. Then what else? He said, I learned that my rizq, sustenance will not be taken by anyone else no other person so I am at peace I became at peace and it's really like this if you read Quran you will know what I'm saying Allah says he provides for everyone yeah Allah feeds every living creature on this earth yeah Allah Rizquha. He didn't say ala Allahi wa Rasulihi, ala Allahi wa Malaikatihi, ala Allahi wa Amalihim. No, ala Allahi wahdahu. Just Allah. Huwa al-Razzaq. Dhul quwwati al-Mateen. He is the provider. It's not plural there. The single provider. But we struggle sometimes to go all the way. He learned that from his great teachers. And he was at ease. How much profit will I make today in my shop? However much you work hard and Allah has destined for you. That's how much you're going to profit. Not because there's a war in Ukraine or in America something else is happening. No. That affects, but that's not the, the bottom line. So he understood that. And we all have to understand this and be solid and firm about it. Then he said, I learned that I cannot escape from Allah's sight. And I already mentioned this. So, but listen to this. He said, I became shy of Allah. Mm. Listen to this degree of adab with Allah. You raise your consciousness of Allah by fasting the month of Ramadan and then six days of Shawwal. And you are now fully conscious, mindful that Allah is watching you. So what do you do with that? How do you behave yourself after knowing that and believing in that and having no doubt in that? Wouldn't you be shy, doing something wrong, sinful? Allah is watching you. Yes, 
we should and have to. So it needs to go to the next level of our etiquette with Allah, adab and haya, which is the highest of levels, like the Prophet said to that Sahabi. But there is no one in the house, Prophet, I just had a shower bath. Of course I can walk with no clothes on, there's nobody to see me. Allah is there to see you. That's the highest degree of shyness, modesty. Cover yourself, Allah is always there and always watching you. Don't do wrong, try not to. And then the last thing, and this one is practical. He said, I learned that death comes suddenly. Certainly comes, and it also comes suddenly. Out of nowhere, really, we have no idea when it's going to come. So I constantly prepare for it. And today we have a janazah like my colleague, Imam Zakiri announced. 58 year old lady passed away, Rahmatullah alayha. So make janazah prayer for her. So he learned, and we all have to learn this. وَكَفَى بِالْمَوْتِ وَاعِضَى A sufficient of an admonition is to know that we are all going to die without knowing when and how it will come. How much, the question is, have we prepared for it? Are we ready to leave tonight or tomorrow or like this with this lady? Let us prepare before it's late, before we regret. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ الْعَظِيمَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ بَارَكَ اللَّهُ لَنَا وَلَكُمْ بِسَأَلِهِ الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله حمد الكاملين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت وسلمت وباركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأدخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفران اللهم ربنا برحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين يا رحيم يا رحمن اللهم إنا نسألك العفو والعافية في الدين والدنيا والآخرة اللهم إنا نسألك الإخلاص في القول والعمل اللهم إنا نسألك الاستقامة في أعمالنا وأقوالنا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم ربنا برحمتك نستغيث فأنت أرحم الراحمين ليس لنا رب سواك فندعوه يا الله يا ذا الجلال والإكرام والعزة التي لا ترام آمين ربنا إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة